Hi, this is problem 10.11. We are starting to solve problems with combined shapes. So here we have this I beam, and we like to find the area moment of inertia respect to the X axis. We can divide our beam in three different shapes. So I will call this one over here, one, this one over here, two, and this one over here, three. And the area moment of inertia respect to the point O will be equals to the area moment of inertia of the first figure plus the area moment of inertia respect to that point O of the second figure plus the area moment of inertia of the third figure. So let's calculate each of these ones. So I will do the first one. As you recall, and you can find it that in the tables, the area moment of inertia of a rectangular shape will be 1 12th of the base times the height. Since I'm calculating respect to the x-axis, will be the height, which is the perpendicular distance cube. So it will be 5. 50 millimeters cube times the base, which is 200. But this formula is valid for the centroid of this figure, which is right here. Therefore, I have to calculate the distance respect to that centroid to the point where I want to calculate the area moment of inertia and use the parallel axis theory. For the parallel axis theorem, the inertia respect to one point will be the inertia respect to the center of gravity plus the distance squared times the area. So I have to find this distance. In this case, this distance will be 300 divided by 2 plus 50 divided by 2. That's equals to 150 plus 25, 175 millimeters. And in this case, I will need that as well. And this is 175 millimeters as well. So then, this will be plus my distance, which I already said that is 175 squared times the area. And the area will be base times high. And I have that number, 3.083 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. So that's the first value. So we need to find the second value. And that will be the shape is in the other direction. Therefore, my base is equals to that base is given, which is 50. Let me write it right here. So the height is 300 cube times the base, which is 50, divided by 12. In this case, we do not need to use the parallel axis theorem because I'm calculating the inertia respect to its center of mass. And this value gives me 1.125 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. Now I go for the third one. And in this case, I also need to use the parallel axis theorem because the table only gives me the inertia respect to the center of mass, right? We already said that. So in this case, it's the height is, will be 50 again times the base. So as you see, that's exactly the same as this one. And since this distance is square, it doesn't matter that it's uh, under the axis, it gives me the same value. So this value is exactly the same as the previous one. So when I add those three together, I will have two times the first value plus the second one. and that all in millimeters 
to the fourth. And the result is equals to seven point two ninety one ten to the eight millimeters to the fourth. Now that we have the area moment of inertia respect to the x axis, we can calculate the radius of gyration. Definition of radius of gyration, as you recall, is the square root of that value divided by the area. The area of the figure will be area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. And that will be, of course, we already calculated the area, right? So the area 1 will be 200 times 50. The area 2 will be 50 times 300. Well, we can actually multiply this one by 2 because it's exactly the same. And the total area gives me a value of 3.5 times 10 to the 4th millimeters squared. So now that I have the area and I have the area moment of inertia, I can calculate the radius of gyration, which will be then the square root of this value over here, divided by the area that I just calculated. So, and the value is 144 millimeters. And what does the radius of gyration represent? It represents a distance in this case 144 from O, where I could locate all the area and it will be give me an equivalent figure.